What I want to do in this video is step through the program that we wrote in the previous video to really understand what's happening line by line and get a little bit of an intuitive understanding for for loops and variables. And we're going to do it for a specific example. We're going to do it in an example where the user input, so when, it, when the user is prompted to input a number, the user will input the number 3. We're just going to assume that. And I've picked a low number so that we don't have to keep looping through this forever, so this video can be of a reasonable length. So right when that happens, when the user inputs the number 3, it assigns the variable number to be equal to 3. And there's two ways that you can think about this. I tend to, when I do in any programming language, when I think of a variable, I tend to view it as a bucket. So I have a bucket called number. I have a bucket called number. And in that bucket, when the user inputs a 3, if the user inputs a 3, I'm sticking a 3 in that bucket. Python is a little bit different than some languages. And the, the more correct way, and, and, and they're both kind of intuitive, I think, if you think about it, of viewing a variable in Python is to think of the variable as referring to, referring to the 3. And I say that because in Python, if you change a variable's, it, let's say right under this we wrote number is equal to 2. We didn't do that. But if we said number is equal to 2, what Python does is it actually leaves that 3 there in memory. And then it would then point to the number 2. It would then point to the number 2 instead. It wouldn't obliterate the 3 and just put a 2 there. The 3 still exists. And that's important when we start doing, uh, I guess, more complex or nuanced things with, with more fancy data types. But let's rewind all of this. For the sake of this program, you can view it either way, a bucket with a 3 in it, or you could view it as a label that is referring to a 3 someplace in, in the computer's memory. Now, the next thing that happens is that we have another variable called product. And we assign product to be equal to 1. So I'm going to do this, the same two representations. So we've set up another bucket here called product. And we are assigning, we are putting 1 in that bucket. Or you could say that product is, product is a variable. It's a label that is referring to a 1. And then, and then we get to our for loop. And this is probably the confusing part. So we have 4i in range of number. And number in this case, so literally, the interpreter say, OK, what's number? Well, in this case, number is 3. So this is going to be evaluated as range of 3. This is going to be evaluated as range of 3 in our particular example. Range of 3. And once again, how did the interpreter know that? It said range of number. Number is a variable. Look up the number variable. OK, 3 is sitting in it, so I'm going to put a 3 right there. Or look up the number variable. The number variable is pointing to the number 3, so I'm just going to put a 3 here and take range of 3. And we saw in the last video that if you evaluate just range of 3, range of 3 is equal to, is equal to a sequence of numbers 0, 1, so it creates a sequence of three numbers starting at 0 up to that number minus 1. And what the for loop does is every time we go through the for loop, it executes this code. It executes this code that's inside the for loop. And we know it's inside the for loop because we indented it. We indented it. And the convention, the most used convention in Python is to you don't use the tab. You would press space four times. And that, that tells the interpreter anything at this level of indention happens every time we go through the for loop. And, and when we start the for loop, the i variable is going to start at 0. So the first time we go through the for loop, i is going to be the first element in this sequence. Then when we go through the for loop again, i is going to be the second element in the sequence. And then when we go through the for loop again, i is going to be the third element in the sequence. And then we go to the for loop, and It'll try to assign i to another element in the sequence and say, hey, wait, there are no more elements in the sequence. And then it'll break out of the for loop and then continue on with the rest of the program. So given that, let's think about what happens for the particular example where the user inputted a 3. So range of number is going to evaluate as, I wrote it up here, 0, 1, 2. Zero, let, me, let me do it this way. Let me write it over here. So it's going to be 0, 0, 1, 2. And the first time into, through the loop, i, so I'm going to use this convention right over here, the first time through the loop, i is going to refer to the 0. Or if we use this convention over here, the first time as we go through the loop, i, you could view it as a bucket that is going to be assigned the first element of range of 3, the first element of the sequence. It is going to be 0. And then we execute what's in the loop. We assign. 
we reassign. So we have reassign product to be something new right over here. And what is this something new? The first time we go through the for loop, i is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So this part, the first time we go through the loop, let me do that in a color you can see. The first time we go through the loop, this is going to be 1, 0 plus 1. Product is 1. Product is 1. Product is 1. This first time we go through the loop, let me do the same colors. So i is i is 0 plus 1, so we get 1. 1 times 1 is 1. So product will be assigned to be 1. So product will be reassigned to be 1, which really isn't going to change anything because it's already 1. So it was 1 before. You multiply it by 1 and reassign it to be 1. So I could write you know, cross out 1. It's now going to be 1 again, but I'll just leave it as 1. Or we can just say it's going to be reassigned to be 1. So nothing really has changed that first time through the loop. But now interesting things are going to happen. So now we'll go back to the beginning of the loop. And now i will be the next element in the loop. So now i, let me delete this. It will, be, it will be reassigned to be the next element in the loop. So now i will be 1. Now i will be 1. That's what the for loop does. It makes i each of the items in the sequence in order, going through them. And now we execute it again. Now, now we go look at product times i plus 1. Product is still 1. i is now 1. So 1 plus 1 is now going to be 2 is now going to be 2. So 1 times 2 is going to be our new product. So the product, the new product, it was 1, but now we're multiplying it by 2 and assigning it again to product. So the new product is now going to be 2. So the product variable is now 2. And then now we go, we try to loop again. And now this time i will be i will be the next element. i is going to be the next element in the sequence i is going to be the next element in the sequence right over here. Or we could say i is going to be reassigned to 2, the next element of the sequence. And we try to evaluate it again. So now we go into the for loop. Product is now 2. Product is now 2. i is now 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So this whole expression over here is 3. So we have 2, product is now 2 times i plus 1, i plus 1, i is 2, so i plus 1 is 3. So you have 2 times 3 is now going to be 6. So the new product times i plus 1 is now 6. So this is now, this is now going to, let me do that same blue color. This is now going to be, this is now going to be 6. And now we try to execute the for loop again. And the for loop's going to say, hey, let me reassign i, let me reassign i to be the next the next item in the sequence, it tries to find the next item in the sequence, but says, wait, there is no next item in the sequence. There is no next item of the sequence, so we're done executing our for loop. So there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing left in our sequence, so we're done with our for loop. Now we break out of it and we go to the next line in the program. So the next line in the program is literally just print the product. And at this point, we just want to output the product. And the variable product is now six. The variable product is now 6. And actually, one thing I should have done this entire time is I was sticking with the bucket representation. But the product on this representation here, it started referring to 1. It got reassigned to 1. But then it got assigned to 2. So then this reference went to 2. And then it got reassigned to 6. Then it got reassigned to 6. So if I were to be consistent with this representation over here. Every time product is referring to another number, or you can view it as a bucket for the sake of this program where it keeps getting reassigned. And what was cool about this is when we're done with this for loop, the, the number that's sitting in the bucket product, the variable product, or you could say the number that the variable product is referring to is the factorial of the number that the person inputted. It's the factorial of 3. And if you remember, 3, the symbol for factorial is an exclamation mark, is equal to 3 times 2 times 1.